Hey guys, so just on the way to family Christmas and we decided this was an opportune time to do the Q&A video because we're together and there's nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, James is obviously driving, so he's going to be a little bit focused on the road, but um, I'm kind of fun and exciting, so I will talk. Okay, so first question that we got was how do we get into bodybuilding? And I'll let him start. Um, so I guess I was originally extremely overweight, um, 265 pounds at my heaviest. Doctor looked me in the eye, you know, told me I wasn't going to have much of a long life if I kept it up. Um, so I went ahead and, um, all through nutrition dropped about a hundred pounds, never stepping foot in a gym. Um, and just hated myself at 165 pounds more than I did at 265 didn't want to be a scrawny little guy got in the gym hit the weights a bit and just absolutely fell in love with it and everything fell into place from there so how did I get into bodybuilding and competing and all that jazz so I used to be really tiny I was 115 and I'm 5'9 so that's kind of like very petite like I fit into double zero and now I'm lucky if I like find pants that fit that aren't made of spandex <laughs> 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 So, yeah, went 15 and then I kind of, um, you know, gained a little bit of weight because obviously at 115 I wasn't eating much at all. Um, so then I kind of went up to like 140 ish and I went back down to like 130 um, via cardio bunny style. So, like the whole Fitspo, 1,000 calories, 1,200 calories a day, tons of cardio type shit. And. You know, I got that like cute like yoga girl bod, <laughs> I guess. Um, and I still wasn't stoked about it. So I uh, decided to start lifting and I just kind of uh, fell in love with the changes that I was seeing in my body and just kind of fell in love with fell in love with the iron. So that's how I got involved in it. Um, so questions we got about meal prep. How many meals do we eat in a day? Um, what we eat on season versus off season? Um, I eat seven meals a day. I'm currently at uh, eight meals a day um, plus two shakes. Um, so I, I wake up at two in the morning, have a shake and a banana. That's one shake and then post workout, um, I have 30 grams of whey and 80 grams of highly branched chain cyclodextrin. Um, and then eight solid food meals a day. Um, so the calories are currently up at 5,000 um, and about 600 carbs at the moment. Katie's extremely jealous. I'm a little bit salty, not gonna lie. Um, so I'm eating seven meals a day right now because I get hungry as hell and I cannot go more than two and a half hours of eating unless somebody wants to get stabbed. <laughs> so. I'll vouch for that. <laughs> um, yeah. Eating every two and a half hours, about seven meals a day. Um, mostly, mostly food. I do have a whey isolate post workout with um, with cream of rice. I prefer rice over oats just because it bloats me um, a little bit less. And yeah, uh, on season versus off season dieting. Honestly, it is not that different. We eat very similar foods if not the same foods the only difference is I will add um, cheaper sources of protein in off season obviously because dieting gets very expensive so I'll add things like you know uh, low-fat cottage cheese instead of eating seven meals of chicken every day um, and there's just obviously higher quantities in off season because you're trying to put on mass as opposed to shred the fuck up so yeah um, training. James, what's your training split right now? Um, so right now, uh, while I'm trying to put on mass, I'm currently just lifting five days of the week. Um, and basically, all upper body is getting hit twice. I'll have sort of a, a heavy day where I do a lot of compound movements, um, and sort of a secondary day where there's some isolation movements in there. Um, and due to the fact that I'm trying to bring the upper body up to match the lower, I'm only hitting quads once. 
um, where everything, even hamstrings are being hit twice, as well as chest, shoulders, arms, and back, um, just in an effort to bring everything up to match the wheels. Yeah, so um, with me, I actually just started working with an amazing co coach. Uh, shout out to Lloyd, Rise Athletic Performance. Yeah, y'all are awesome. Um, so I'm hitting everything monsters because we didn't sleep last night. <laughs> Stay tuned for crazy video and us a little bit dancing at the gym. It's a little funny. Um, anyhow, yeah, I'm training everything two to three times a week right now. Um, six days. I'm really at the point where I don't want to put on too much more size. So I'm kind of just trying to refine, um, refine what I have, obviously grow a little bit in some areas and just kind of um, get that muscle density and muscle maturity in others. Um, what's another one? How did we meet? <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, so, James here followed me on Twitter for a while and I didn't, I didn't really notice. And then I was at the Stratford show and I posted a picture with Rulu and Clara. And uh, James felt the need to comment booty though <laughs> on uh, my post. So then I kind of like lurked his Instagram a little bit and his Twitter and I found out that he lives kind of close to me. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then we found out that uh, we trained at the same gym because one of his best friends trains at the gym that I train at. So we figured out that we'd seen each other before. Anyhow, so I slid into his DMs <laughs> and we started talking and it just kind of kind of evolved from there. He was there with me um, during my prep when I was miserable. Anybody that dealt with me during prep, shout out to you because y'all are awesome. Um, and then I was there with him through the start of his prep and we're back. Sorry guys, uh, phone call there, a little bit of a blip. Anyways. So I was there with him through his prep and um, I was there with him at his show backstage because obviously if you ever have competed, you know that your brain just does not function at all. Like show day, the last like month of prep really, but like especially the last like week of prep and then show day, you're just like not functional at all. So anyways, I was James's brain for the day, essentially. Very much so, yeah. And uh, low-key kind of am still a little bit sometimes. <laughs> she cooks a little better than I do. And I put lids on Tupperware containers. If you guys don't know this, put lids on your Tupperware containers when you put them in the microwave or else they will be dry as shit. And everybody already knows chicken and rice is boring, so you don't want dry, boring chicken and rice. Anyhow, um, what questions do we get? We got questions about shoulder training. Uh, James has pretty sick delts. I'm working on the pumpkins. It's kind of going okay. Um, so James, what do you do for delts? Um, I mean, honestly, the absolute biggest thing, um, you'll never catch me with over a 30 pound dumbbell in my hands when I'm doing lateral raises. I see guys just jerking it up with all kinds of body movement um, and it's just doing nothing for you. I mean the biggest thing is arms at the side really feel like you're pulling from your elbows as opposed to your hands. Give it a good squeeze at the top um, and another thing that I love is to not just simply use dumbbells or free weights. I'm a big fan of actually using a clip and a handle on these um, 25 pound resistance bands I have and the constant tension is great and as you get to the top of the movement there's more tension and you can really contract at the maximal contraction um, and the pump you get from that is just ridiculous. Um, I mean shoulders are definitely a genetically strong body part for me um, but I really do believe I've developed a great mind to muscle connection um, and it, it really is the laterals that are going to bring up that medial head as well as I'm a huge fan of Smith machine behind the neck press. 
those you, are dope. Yeah, you will feel you will feel a lot of it in your medial delt as opposed to the front delt when you're pressing behind your head, um, and those really help as well. I've never really gotten into upright rows all that much. They tend to bug my shoulders a bit, um, but that just tons and tons of laterals and some heavy behind the neck presses, and you're on your way to some older shoulders. Yeah. Um, what do I do for shoulders? So. I kind of do for shoulders what I do for every other body part, which is just like pick an exercise, drop sets, supersets, um, like weird variations, just a bunch of like crazy shit that like you look and you'd be like, I don't, I don't understand what the fuck this girl's doing, but it's actually effective and painful as hell. So, you know, I kind of go by the more, obviously the harder you push the more you're gonna get out of workouts right your occlusion too oh uh occlusion training is great uh, my joints are like kind of shitty sometimes so what <laughs> a lot of the time all the time yeah. <laughs> it's a daily thing so um what occlusion training does is it essentially restricts blood flow out of the muscle but allows blood to go into the muscle so the pumps are fucking insane that's the first time i dropped the f-bomb this whole video i think i'm impressed yeah <laughs> new record all right um anyways so occlusion training i love to do that and it's also easier on the joints right because your muscles um you use a lot less weight a lot to less create weight. the same stimulus. Precisely. Thank you, James. You're welcome. Apparently he's my brain sometimes, too. <laughs> um, so, what other questions did we get? We got... Uh, I had my phone somewhere, but I think I dropped it. When, uh, when we were planning on competing next, oh. um, both of us are planning on doing the provincials in June. So, that means y'all are gonna get fucking prep videos from us as a couple together that's the plan I'm not as solid on it as I think Katie is um, but at the very least I will be dieting to support her at the same time hopefully do some photo shoots so at the very very least I'll be getting absolutely diced the fuck up with her um, yeah, solid I'm, on competing, not solid on me. Sorry, boys. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm really, uh, you know, I'm really going to kind of see where I'm at 20 weeks out. I only had about uh, seven months after my show. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want to step on stage with the same package. I want to make improvements. I mean, that being said, I'm already up 15 quality pounds. Um, but, you know, I, I really want to blow it completely out of the water. If that's not a possibility... I'll just get absolutely shredded with Katie and rebound from there and bring a sick package for the following year. Um, another question that I got was how do I put on size while staying lean? Um, essentially, it just comes down to what you're eating and the amount above maintenance that you're eating. And when. And when. So what I do normally is I'll have most of my carbs around my workout and in the morning and then I'll taper... Um, I'll taper carbs down and keep uh, fats higher at nighttime. Um, I also don't go crazy above maintenance, right? Some people are like, oh, hey, I maintain it this. Let's add 600 calories and see, see what happens, right? Where that's just asking to get fluffy as hell. Um, <laughs> and a lot of the girls rebound very hard off of their um, competitions, right? Because they they get metabolic damage or you know they just um they can't handle metabolic damage too many fucking trips to Krispy Kreme is what it is six so weeks hard. later we're still fucking putting down six donuts a day I'm sorry it is what it is anyways so now that we've offended like most competitors <laughs> um no it's been for both James and I um we have focused on really like keeping it clean out of our competitions, keeping it clean out of dieting um, to reduce that crazy amount of weight that you can put on because your body obviously after being out of, 
a deficit for so long is gonna just pack on whatever you give it, right? So you wanna be you wanna be doing just above maintenance in order to stay lean and not get fluffy. That's for me. For James right now, the plan is just he eats and I tell him he gets starts to get fat. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of bangles. <laughs> so yes. Um Again, he said earlier how much food he's eating, and I may or may not be a little salty about it because I'm not a 230-pound man, so I can't eat like that. Yep. Um, another big <laughs> one, um, and especially for her, um, yes, she is 18 years old. That is the truth. Um, and then <laughs> we have height and weight. Everybody's all over that. Oh, um, yeah. So I'm, I'm currently six foot. Um, 230 pounds dead on this morning, um, fasted weight, um, and Katie? I am like kind of small right now. <laughs> I'm 5'9", uh, sitting around 1, 169, 170 in the morning. Um, and that Small, tiny, bikini girl. So offensive right now. <laughs> um, but that is down because I was up around 1, 182 earlier in the off season. I was a little bit more fluffy. Um, my body just wasn't really responding to things, so, um, like, couldn't lose weight worth shit. Because of stress. If y'all have stress in your life and, like, negative bullshit, just, just let it go and be happy and be goofy and dance between sets and shit. <laughs> um, so, anyhow, I feel like we covered most, if not all, of the questions, so, um, I don't think either of us are Leafs fans for whoever put that out there. Not oh. feeling it. Uh, go Canada. A. Anyways, um, wonderful to make this video for you guys. Let us know if you have any more questions for us. We'll probably do a Q&A video at some point later in time when we have a little bit more questions. Um, yeah. So, peace out, y'all. See you guys later.